That's another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify makes it simple to sell to anyone from anywhere. Whether you're selling succulents or stilettos, start selling with Shopify and join the platform simplifying commerce for millions of businesses worldwide. Customize your online store to your brand, discover new customers, and build the relationships that keep them coming back. Now it's your turn to try Shopify for free and start selling anywhere. Sign up for a free trial at shopify.com slash ATC, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash ATC to start selling online today. Shopify.com slash ATC. This episode of 60 Second Science is brought to you by TED Health. Ever wonder what happens to donated eggs after the donors die or how sugar affects the brain? On TED Health, a podcast from the TED Audio Collective, Dr. Shoshana Ungerleider introduces you to leading health experts and breaks down all of the fascinating health questions you didn't know you had. You'll learn what a smart bra means for better heart health, three ways to prepare for the next pandemic, and how we can all live healthier lives. Hear more about the way your body works and the newest insights changing the medical world from TED speakers. Find TED Health wherever you listen to podcasts. This is Scientific American 60 Second Science. I'm Pakina Maimer. Clicks, clucks, grunts, and snorts. These are not sounds that we typically associate with turtles. They're actually thought to be very quiet or even silent. But it looks like we may have grossly underestimated how much sound they can make. Now, a new study in Nature Communications has collected vocal recordings from 53 species of turtles and other animals that were otherwise considered to be mute. Those clicks you've just heard were calls made by baby giant Amazon River turtles swimming together and vocalizing. A group of evolutionary biologists and other scientists in five different countries poured over these recordings and combined them with vocal repertoires of about 1,800 animal species from other studies. They were able to piece together evidence that the last common ancestor of all lungfish and tetrapods started vocalizing more than 400 million years ago. And just in case you're not familiar, tetrapods are four-limbed vertebrates that include amphibians, mammals, birds, and reptiles. That's at least 100 million years earlier than previous studies had suggested. The new revelations amount to a rewriting of the acoustic history of animals with backbones. And I did field work in the Brazilian Amazon with a researcher that published one of these first papers showing that, that turtles can communicate acoustically, and that inspired me. So I went back home and I got a piece of equipment and I started recording my own pets. And I discovered that they were producing sounds as well. And the, and the species I had were not known to produce sounds. So I started thinking maybe, maybe they all do. And I went out there and I, and I recorded as many as I could. <laughs> that was Gabriel Jorgovich Cohen, a researcher at the University of Zurich and study co-author. By the way, the pets he's talking about are giant Amazon river turtles more commonly known in the U.S. as red-eared slider turtles. This is the only known species to have post-hatch parental care among all turtles, which is pretty amazing. And they discovered this by recording the sounds of the animal. Not only this species, but also sea turtles, for example. When they are in the nest, the hatchlings start vocalizing from within the egg to synchronize hatch. And also when they come out all together, they individually have less chance of being eaten by another animal. And in the case of the Amazon river turtle, when they go to the water, the females are waiting for them and they are also vocalizing and they find each other and then they migrate together up the river to the forest. A previous study published in 2020 by researchers at the University of Arizona concluded that only two of 14 families of turtles vocalized. It also stated that acoustic communication evolved independently in most major tetrapod groups, with origins in the range of 100 million to 200 million years ago. But now we know that's not the case. I was very surprised, happily surprised, when I found so many different types of sounds. I kept recording more and more animals, and every animal I recorded made sounds. I, I had no negative results whatsoever. And that was surprising by itself. Jorgovich Cohen recorded hundreds of hours worth of footage over two years, 
not just of turtles, but also of lungfish, tuataras, and other creatures. Animals typically produce sounds for many reasons, to define territory, to attract a mate, or to communicate with their young ones. It's a useful skill. Actually, I found that for many turtle species, so uh, there are sounds that are only made by males. There are some that are only made by females and some only by juveniles. And some that males will only make when they are in front of a female. If there is one animal from this study that I would have sworn is 100% mute, it's the Sicilian. For those who are not familiar, let me paint a little picture. Sicilians are slippery, slimy, and slithery little things. They burrow, and they look like earthworms or even snakes. But they're neither. They're in fact amphibians. They have a backbone and a skull, jaws and all, but no limbs. And like many tetrapods, they emit sounds through their respiratory tract, just like their common ancestor. It's actually not very easy to come across one. The Sicilian was a, a special one because I, I definitely expected it not to make any sounds. And it's not, it's not only that it does, but it makes very strange and very loud sounds. Not to be crass, but that sounds a bit like a fart. I, I find it funny. And when I heard it for the first time, I started laughing. And I sent it to my friends that, that did field work with me. And they also started laughing. And, and they said, I, I cannot believe you. You made the sound with your mouth and you're sending me the, the file. It's like, no, I swear. <laughs> the study, Common Evolutionary Origins of Acoustic Communication in Coenate Vertebrates, is less focused on the function of these sounds and more on the evolution of acoustic signals. But in future studies, the researchers plan to dig deeper by analyzing the sounds further in an attempt to understand what they mean. We tried to also make footage of these animals while we were recording the sounds so we could try to correlate any type of behavior to the sounds that they were making and try to understand how they use the sounds or what ideas they convey. Sometimes Jorgovich Cohen and his colleagues would find more than 30 different sounds in a single species repertoire. It seems that the more socialized the animal is, the more vocally diverse it is, he says. But further studies are needed to confirm this. Hopefully this is the beginning of a new, new field of, of study. So people are going to go out there and try to record more of these animals and, and get to new conclusions and new discoveries. But it would be really cool if we could, for example, do playback experiments and try to understand if they reply to the sounds we make. And then we can start understanding what the sounds mean and how they are used. Thank you for listening. For Scientific American 60 Second Science, I'm Pakina Maimer. Thank you.